everyone, welcome to Stardust Gold Crochet. My name is Tasha. Today's tutorial is going to be the Mandala Infinity Scarf or Mandala, however you like to say it. Um, this scarf is really great. It comes with a lot of really neat stitches, uh, front post stitches, working in the uh, front loops and the back loops and the third loops. So you'll have a lot of fun learning new techniques if you don't already know those with this scarf. I re rebooting it, making it free, and also I changed up the color a little bit for this one. And this color I'm using here is um, the Baby Yarn by Mandala Line Brand. And it's, um, you get it 590 yards. It takes up one entire cake for this. And it's 100% acrylic. I'm using, it's a three weight yarn, but we're going to do a plying technique called Navajo Plying where you make your thin yarn chunky, and I'm using a 6.5 millimeter hook. So this pattern works in multiples of two or any even number of chains to start, but for this pattern, we're gonna start off with a half double crochet, I'm sorry, a um, foundation half double crochet. Actually, my written pattern calls to chain 210. So you go ahead and chain 210, um, and you can pause the video I'll put the little icon up there for pausing it. Or you can do a foundation um, foundation row of half double crochets. I did 210 for the one pictured in my sample. But for this tutorial, I'm probably gonna chain about 20 and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna start off making our thin yarn chunky. And that's gonna be something that's gonna kind of go without throughout the pattern it may turns this three weight yarn into a five weight so to do that you kind of create an S with your yarn there's several different ways to do it but this is the way I do it so you just kind of create an S like this a giant S pattern and then you're gonna scoop up three strands of the S and it creates a loop down here on the bottom so you can just let that other piece kind of go then you take this loop here and you're gonna make your slip knot with all three of those loops so kind of go back down your down a little bit create your slip knot however you like to create your slip knots and it can be a little weird at first because you want to make sure you get through all three of those pieces of yarn and leave enough tail to weave in, which I don't think I did, so I might redo that. So then if you didn't do that and you didn't leave enough tail, just stretch this out just a little bit more, make it longer. Like that, that's a little bit longer. So you're gonna grab up these three pieces where your tail is basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my slip knot. Putting my, this is how I do my slip knots. Just kind of grab it, bring it on up through. I guess I didn't leave much, much, much of a tail either for that, but it's okay because this is just a tutorial. Okay, so there I have my slip knot. So what, we're, what you do first is you're going to chain 210 or any even number of chains. For this tutorial, I'm gonna chain 20, and you're gonna use all three strands of your yarn. So you're, you're bringing all three strands together, and that's how it makes turns it into a chunky yarn. So there I have three, and I can feel already that I'm getting towards the end of where my loop's gonna turn back into one. So what you do there is you take this, the piece attached to your yarn and just pull it through, pull it through the loop there. So I'm gonna put it right here and just kind of grab it like that and pull it through. And you're gonna do that throughout your pattern because that's how you make your thick yarn or your thin yarn thick. And it creates a little bit of a knot, like a tie right there, but it disappears within the pattern. So, so I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15. I'm going to do 16. So there I have 16. And here we're going to join our two pieces together. So I usually like to lay mine with the flat side, put my fingers on the bumpy side, and then kind of bring it up like that. And so we're going to go into the first chain with a slip stitch. Try to get through. And then make sure there's no kind of twists in your chain. So for the row, the first row round, sorry, I always do that. We're going to chain two and we're going to work straight into that join where we joined. My yarn is catching on something. So we're going to work a half double crochet in that same join and then we're also going to work a half double crochet around the entire length of the pattern. So for 210 that's going to take quite a quite a while for you guys. So pause the video and then come back when you're finished with your 210 half double crochets. And I have 16 so I'll be back faster than you. Okay so here I've completed my 16 all the way to the end and I'm going to join into the chain. So we're going to join into the top of the chain two, which is right there. You guys can see the yarn. And since we're joining into the chains, your first stitch is always going to be your first stitch. Some patterns call to to, to work into the chain or into the join, but we're gonna we're gonna start our first stitches, and also when it says skip a stitch, you're gonna be skipping your first actual stitch. And for the second round, we're gonna chain two, and then this is a half treble crochet, and we're gonna be working into the third loop of our half doubles. So if you're not familiar with the half double third loop. You know that we have a front loop, a back loop, and then when you kind of switch it back this way, you'll see there's a third loop right here along the back side. And you can see the back of a half double looks just like the top of a half double crochet. So that's where you're going to find your third loop, and some people call it a camel hump. So we're going to work into that camel hump, and we're going to do a half treble. So to start a half treble, you're going to yarn over twice. We're going to insert our hook into the third loop or the camel hump. What that does is it creates a nice V pattern on the front. Then you yarn over and pull up one loop. You'll have four on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And this is where the half treble comes in. It creates a half double crochet on top of your treble. I've got a dog here. So you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So you'll, it'll create the same effect as that on the front. So yarn over two times, insert your hook into the camel hump, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through three. And that's your half treble. So you're gonna repeat the half treble all the way around and then join into the chain two when you get to the beginning. So go ahead and pause the video and we'll be back. All right, I hope you guys had an easier time than I did. <laughs> so here are 16 that I've chained for or done for mine completed. I wanted to show you guys too that when you transition the colors, the colors have this really neat kind of transition to them when they start to, to fade into the other colors, which is great. So here we're going to, to join in the top of our chain two. And that's our completed round. And chains do not count as stitches, so remember just only count your actual stitches. For round three, we're going to chain two. We're going to skip our first stitch, which is this actual half treble. And then we're going to do an extended single crochet in the next. And an extended single crochet, you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through the first loop only. Yarn over and pull through both. And that's an extended single crochet. 
So after we complete our extended single crochet, we're going to skip the next stitch, or we have to chain one first, sorry. Skip the next stitch, and then do an extended single crochet in the next. I always want to yarn over, but you don't. You just insert it, pull through one, and then pull through two. Then chain one, skip one, insert it, pull up, pull through one more, and then, so there's your extended single crochet. It leaves a little gap, and it also leaves this little hole right here, which um, that's the hole we're going to be working in for the next round. So go ahead and complete your entire round and pause the video. And here I'm at the end, so I know some people don't like Navajo plying. If you don't like this, go ahead and just use a five weight yarn, chunky yarn, and that will work good too. Okay guys, I'll meet you back on the other side. I've completed my, my 16, and I wanted to show you guys how to count these. So we skipped the first stitch, but we're gonna only first count our first extended single crochet plus the chain one. So how we do that is we're gonna do two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16. So we're, gonna, we're counting our extended single plus our chain one as the 16th, or you, for you guys, the 210th stitch. And to join again, we're going into the top of that chain two to join our rounds. There we go. And so for the next round, which is gonna be round four, we're gonna do it a little different. We're gonna chain three. I think I lost a loop, there we go. One, two, three. Chain three, and we're gonna extend it single crochet in the first extended single crochet so that's right here these extended single crochets kind of leave a weird a weird top to them as you can see how it creates this little gap over here so this that's actually the top of the loop itself just like that's the top of our chain loop so we're going to go ahead and extend a single crochet into the very first one here and i need to pull out more yarn Then we're going to chain one, and we're gonna skip one chain, which is, that's our chain one there. And then we're gonna work an extended single crochet into the right of the main extended single right there. So go straight into that little space. It almost looks like there's two chain spaces with a diagonal bar. So go into the left opening and do an extended single plus a chain one, skip, and then work straight into the, the next opening. And that repeats a chain one, extended single crochet, chain one, until you get to the end. So you can pause the video and come back. And it looks like I'm almost finished. Navajo plying, sometimes you can drop the strands, so you gotta make sure you drop the strands. So when we get to the end, we have, we have our extended single plus our chain one. And we're going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch into the second chain of the chain three. So we've got our three chains, one, two, and three. So we're gonna go into the second one there. I'm woman handling my yarn. Pull out some more yarn. So we're gonna repeat for the next row, row five, we're gonna repeat the row we just completed. So you're gonna chain three, then we're gonna extend it single crochet into the first extended single crochet, which is right here. Chain one, 
and then repeat extended single crochet chain one until you come around and that'll be your completed row five so we've got three four and five so pause the video and come back all right so i completed my last extended single crochet and the end of this row which is a repeat of row four also says to chain into the second chain or slip stitch join into the second chain of our starting chain there so there we have rows four or three four and five now row six starts off with a chain two and we're going to work a half double crochet into the back loop of each stitch or chain around which starting off in your first extended single crochet there so we're going to do a half double crochet into just the back loop only and you know, I'm not sure if you know but every crochet stitch has a front loop and a back loop so the back loop and this has chains mixed in with it so it's a little hard to tell but there's a front loop there there's the back loop so go into the back loop and do one half double crochet in each chain and each stitch What that does is it just creates a ridge in the front. All right, so pause the video here and then meet me back when you have yours complete and see it just creates this just little ridge. Okay, so here's what we have so far. And this is my last row round, half double crochet into the back loop only. So it creates this kind of little ridge up there I wanted to mention too that in, I noticed that in the tutorial for row three, the first row of extended single crochets, you're going to be working into the third loop also. That's in the written pattern, but for some reason I worked through both in this. Um, so I'll make a little note of that on row three, around three, and just let you guys know that that's where you're supposed to be working so it creates another little ridge right there. So there we've got our rows three, four, and five, and then our round six. Round, round, not rows. Okay, so for round seven, after you join into your chain, we're going to be skipping the first half double crochet, and make sure it's not the join, because we're not skipping the join, we're skipping the actual stitch itself. So we're gonna skip this first half double and work a double crochet into the next one but first we're going to chain two then we're going to skip this half double and work a double crochet into the next in the third loop so go ahead and find that third loop back there pull up and double crochet then we're going to work into the third loop of this double crochet that we skipped or half double that we skipped and go back into that third loop which is kind of hard to see but you can see it back there we're working around the other one, the other double crochet. So there it creates an X stitch and it also creates a ridge there in the front. So we repeat that, we're gonna skip one, work a double into the third loop of the next one. Then we're gonna go back into our skip stitch in the third loop and work another double. my yarn through. You continue that around until you reach the very end. So go ahead and pause the video and then we'll come back and we'll start the next round. There you go. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that round. That one goes takes a little bit of time when you're doing 210 of them but here you can see what the pattern of the scarf should look like now of course you're going to have more changes of color because you're working a larger scarf so um, here at the end of that round seven we're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the chain two so right up here one two 
Okay, and so I must note that if you're working this pattern and working 210 stitches, then you'll be at a point where your mandala, mandala yarn will probably be finished. Um, but if it's not, you can continue working the next round with, um, with your mandala yarn, or you can grab another five weight yarn and then use that for the next round, which is what I did because my mandala yarn was gone, right? I mean, it's almost gone. There's like, I think just a tiny bit left, but not enough to do another entire round. So I'm just going to show you how to work this round using my existing yarn. Um, if you're not using the existing yarn, you're going to pull this out, tie it off, and then when you attach your new yarn, you're going to attach it into the same, the same uh, slip stitch that you left off with here so that you're going to be starting over at the same spot. So to begin round eight, we're going to chain two, then we're going to yarn over and we're going to do a back post stitch around the first double crochet. So back post is where you're going in from the back, coming out the front and going straight through the center, wrapping it around that double crochet. So you kind of have to find your double. There it is. Just go in there, then that's your double crochet, and we're going to work a double crochet around that stitch there. The next one, we're going to do a front post stitch around the one that lays on top. So the way I remember which ones I'm doing is we're doing a back post around the one that's kind of hidden in the back and a front post around the one that's out front. So go in from the back, hook it around, and then complete your double crochet. And then go into the middle around the back side. You continue that around until you reach the very first stitch again. And that's what it looks like. It creates kind of a interesting forward and backwards pattern. All right, press pause and we'll meet you around the other side. All right, so I completed my round and that's kind of what, what it looks like. That's such a pretty stitch. I might use that one for another scarf. So when we come to the end of that round, we're going to join into the top of our slip stitch, our chain two into the top chain of the chain two with a slip stitch. There we go. And so that's your completed side for this and then we're going to flip it. We're going to keep it um, right side facing towards us. Just flip it upside down and then we're going to start working the bottom border. So go ahead and grab your complementary yarn. And the reason I say complementary is because as you can see from, um, let me grab it. Okay, and as you can see from this, I used a contrasting color that was something that um, kind of contrasted with the, the starting chain color. So I wanted to use something that would make it pop, but also something that kind of blended in and matched. So I used this color for this, this part, and I used it for the very last um, round that we did for our front post stitches. And actually, we have one more round of after round eight before we go ahead and flip it. My bad. Okay, so after, after round eight, we're going to go ahead, and this is going to be round nine. It's a border. We chain two. Then we're going to half double crochet one in each stitch around. So this is just a regular old half double crochet. So you go through both stitches on this one and just half double your entire round. See, and you have to stop periodically throughout your project and do your Navajo plying, which is fine. You'll get fast at it after a while. It just takes practice. Oops, I yarned over again. I didn't complete it. It's tricky working with three strands. 
So there, just go ahead and complete your entire round of half double crochet. Okay, so after you've complete your last round, round nine, the half double crochets, you should have something that looks similar to this. But what we're gonna do on our round 10, which is gonna be performed down here, we're gonna keep your right side up, turn your work, and of course you can uh, weave in these tails if you'd like. I'm using, for this tutorial, I'm just using Yarnbee's uh, Soft Secret, or not Soft Secret, um, Yarnbee's uh, Denim and Color, because this one is pretty nice. It's a little bit thicker than a worsted weight, but I would recommend using a um, any kind of five weight to complement the five weight that we have here. So for this round, you can you can join into any basically any chain you'd like. You can join into the starting chain, but I'd recommend going into a chain next to it. So I'm just going to go into this chain here. Then we're going to attach our yarn, pull it up, and then chain two. Then we're going to work a half double crochet in between each of the half doubles from our pre from our uh, first or our second first round. So we're going to go in between, straight into the space between, kind of enclosing the centers, and just work one half double crochet in each one of those spaces between the half doubles. This doesn't quite look like the scarf does because I used a thicker yarn for the actual scarf. But that's what you do, and when you get back to the beginning, what you're gonna do is just, this is what it looks like, is you'll join into the chain that you created, and then tie it off and weave in all your tails. And that'll be your entire Mandala Infinity Scarf. Let me grab the other one and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, this is a thicker yarn that I used. And actually, I think I might have doubled up this yarn bee yarn because I liked the way it looked too, which I may have done that, doubled it up. But it does look really cool when you use a thicker weight as opposed to a thinner weight. You can, you can see the difference. It's just thicker. Prettier. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, another note: this there is a right side and a wrong side. Um, but you know, of course, it's going to twist up when you're wearing it. But the right side is the side with the ridges on it, because uh, so I made all those ridges. I like them. But the back side looks pretty cool too. They both look really neat. It kind of gives a raised texture texture to it. All right, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I have a pattern test group, or pattern support and a pattern test group on Facebook, and those links will be down below as well, as well as um, all these links to the yarn are in my blog post, as well as the full written pattern. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel if you like my tutorials, and also hit the little bell button, because if you do, you'll get notified of future tutorials or you can sign up for my mailing list or subscribe to the blog. You can do all those things. Or you can just like my face on Facebook or my page on Facebook too, either way. Anyway guys, I hope you have a great weekend. Happy crocheting and hashtag this Mandala Infinity Scarf so I can see what colors you come up with since this has so many cool colors. Take care guys.